and welcome to the Saturday Morning Wake Up Call right here on KFAR Local Talk Radio. But we are streaming live around the world by way of a series of tubes known as the Internet. You can also find us on your smartphone if your phone is smart with the free TuneIn Radio app. Good morning. I'm Steve Floyd, the man of the face major radio. I'm here just basically to push the buttons and get the message out there. The men with the message are the Bennett brothers from Far North Tactical. We have Aaron Bennett. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. And from Bighorn Enterprises, we have Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. All right. Both of you. <laughs> it's another beautiful day in Fairbanks. It's actually night for me. I just got back from Prudhoe. I haven't slept yet, so my morning will be about 6 o'clock this evening. Outstanding. Nice. Mine might be, too, just because I might want it to be. Oh, really? And that's the thing about being free, Aaron. <laughs> Taking a nap when you feel like it. That's what it is? We're just making fun of our buddy Mike Anderson. I'm hoping he's listening, otherwise this isn't going to be quite as fun. Okay, we're, the guy that went to jail? Yeah, we're actually serious about it because it's so ironic. So, yesterday, well, let's see. Hold on, let's make this story more interesting. So, Mike Anderson goes to jail for eight months. Gets uh, wait, the, wait, on what charge? Uh, conspiracy, I think, or whatever. I don't know. The first time, I don't remember what the charges were now. So, they throw all the charges out, let them go. Of course, he was just started a job. He's on day four of his new job. That paid pretty good. He's an engineer. Then he gets rounded up and thrown back in jail, not charged. But he wasn't arrested. He was just... So he lost his job. Right, he lost his job. Then he was blackballed, basically, by TSA. They took his pilot license. I think he got it back. But he couldn't get a job anywhere because... Still didn't have any of his guns back. Right. Still doesn't have any of his guns back, even though it's been over a year. Let's see. Went to jail eight years. Cost tens of thousands of dollars to basically get the charges thrown out. False arrests and all that good stuff. Well, they broke... They didn't have a warrant. It was bad stuff. They don't need warrants. So yesterday, he had the pleasure and privilege... To go pay his taxes. <laughs> so wait, wait, no, he has basically no income because he can't have a job because he can't get a job because he's been. Well, he was locked up for eight months. A little bit hard. I don't think they pay very well in there. No, they don't. Well, he, yeah, he's gone to several in- job interviews and then they've kind of done this background check. So or whatever. we're not we're not talking income tax. We're talking. No, I was just a property tax. Property tax. Right. Oh, wow. So to keep the government from taking his house, he has to go pay them more. Which, I mean, any tax, who cares? It's still going to the same people, same entity, the state. So they do all that good stuff to him. He can't get a job because when they ever do, they do a background check on him. They're like, uh, why were you in jail for eight months or whatever it is? And he tries to explain, oh, they threw the charges out. And they go, yeah. Well, it's kind of hard to get a job doing that, especially in that sort of situation when you're a mining engineer and, you know. Oh, you're guilty until proven innocent. Or you're just guilty, period, forever in that kind of situation. Sure. I mean, if the state put him in jail just because they let him go, it had to have been, you know, circumstantial. It wasn't because he was innocent. All those great things. And yet, (laughs) he has to pay his taxes now or they're going to come take his house. I mean, only, well, probably not only in America, but I like to say it, only in America. We are free to get thrown in jail, and you're free to pay your taxes or get your property stolen from you. This guy's got it made here. You know, it's funny, if he would have stayed in jail and his wife would have made sufficient money to pay income taxes, she would have actually been paying to hold him in jail. <laughs> She would have been actually paying to have her provider taken from her, and that's so awesome. I really love the system. Well, it's just. It's just this. It's the American way. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of donkiness. Something. I don't know what it is anymore. Anyways, I just thought that was a really fun story. And Mike, if you're listening, sorry we used your pain for today's humor but we're not really happy about it it's just 
It's so ironic, it's mind-numbing to me. Well, it sounds like the kind of story that came out of Stalinist Russia. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't sound like what people would expect to hear happening in the United States. It certainly isn't what people would expect to hear happening in Alaska. I mean, we've generally been uh, a bit freer than the, oh, the rest of the country. Yeah, liberty-loving folks here in Alaska, we all know that's why we came here. Because freedom, no government interference. People are something. Or... People sanction what the state does, though. I mean, I think in... Every aspect of their life, to an extent, they sanction whatever the state does. Oh, because, there's people listening. Because it's legitimate. Yeah, the people are listening right now thinking, well, you need to pay his property taxes. What, <laughs> what are you talking about? What? Government would end. Life would end well, if even, Mike didn't pay his property tax. Even your biggest thumping uh, anti-government guy likes things about the government. He doesn't necessarily want to get rid of it. He wants to change it. The biggest... I'm pretty well, big anti-government. I don't, I don't like anything about him. Vegas. Okay. And he lives way out. Wait. No, I won't tell him where you live, Mike. He lives out where there's not many services. Let's just put it that way. I thought he lived in your basement. Or zero. No, he did for a while. Oh, he did just have a baby. Congratulations. Mm. Little boy. I'm, I'm. You know, you said something about the people giving sanction to the government, sanction to the state for their actions, and I, and I think there even is an assumption when somebody gets arrested, even when the charges get thrown out. Well, if they hadn't done anything wrong, <laughs> he, course, he wouldn't, he course. wouldn't have been picked up. And it's the same kind of thing you hear about people saying in justifying all this constant surveillance we're under, with the the cameras everywhere we turn. Well, if you don't have anything to hide. Sure. What do you have to worry about? You know, those exact words. I think it's funny about... Those exact words were used by the KGB. If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to worry well, about. Well, how did they say it in Russian, Steve? Yes, the... Uh, oh, boy, I have to think about it now. I can th- say it in Serbian. But... If you don't have anything to hide, you don't we'll have anything to worry about. I'll take you up on that challenge. Ako nemaš ništa na gržati... I think he just called you a jackass. I think he did. That's I, called I might have. Actually. <laughs> he doesn't even know. That's good. It's like it's like the gun scare that we have going on right now, where people are paying. Um, well, I just put some AR-15s in my store for eighteen hundred dollars a piece, not because I'm trying to gouge anybody, but because I paid <coughs> dearly for them myself. And people aren't really batting an eye to buy them, even though they know it's ridiculous that's called supply and demand friend i mean that's not that's not gouging i mean you had somebody called in the other day and oh, people need to stop gouging on these goods it's not gouging it's called supply and demand it's you little sure, supply and price guy, goes i up. heard a guy sold a gun on tradio yesterday for 3500 bucks but i heard him too or i heard that he wanted that yeah i also heard a guy call on the radio show like two weeks ago that other one said that's communist that's not free market that's communism jacking up the price <laughs> how's that communism charging more for something that's communism uh, wouldn't communism geez. be forcing to give it to somebody exactly <laughs> well except it was a gun so it wouldn't uh, well I guess what I'm getting at is I mean all the people that are running out and panicking on guns What what's their intent to buy assault rifles with high capacity max I mean what's and I'm not saying every single person but by and large, the intent of the people that are buying those, what is what is the intent of their behind their panic to go get one? They may not be able to. Because they think that they're going to be outlawed, and they want to get them before, assuming that they're going to get grandfathered in. Sure, but what? Um, why would anybody care? I mean, why would they want those particular type of rifles? Why wouldn't they just go buy a 300 Weatherby or something? I mean, I think the answer is pretty obvious, why people buy those type of guns. And it's not to run to some school and shoot a bunch of kids. We all know that. It's for self-defense against government. That's why people go out and buy crap loads of guns like that. And why they're, It's why they're panicking right now. Mm-hmm. But what I think is funny is you talk to those same people that buy those type of things and gather up those type of things and ask them, you know, what they have against the government, it, their list is pretty small. 
they want to change this or that, or they don't like Obama or whatever else, they don't have a fundamental problem with government. Now, let me give you a, a good example of what I'm, where I'm trying to go with that. You, if you take Australia, Australia four years ago, I believe it was, uh, outlawed all their guns. I think it was four years ago. And they made all guns illegal there. And um, a sheriff came on the, the news and he said, you know that if you were to happen to bury your firearm, you technically couldn't be charged with possession of a firearm. And the sales of PVC pipe and end caps went through the roof. And the, obviously the sales of assault rifles and things of that nature, they had a panic just like they had here. Australians ran out and bought everything you could possibly think of to buy. And then following right behind that came these purchases of PVC pipe and end caps because everybody went out and buried their guns, right? So as long as they have this uh, the security of having that gun... It doesn't really matter what the state does to them because they see the state in in its entity as legitimate, don't they? Yeah, I think a little different though is that when at least here it's been kind of beat into our head for so long in America that when they do come and get your guns, then they actually might have some bad thoughts towards you. Well, sure, right, but they they never came and got the guns in Australia. Yeah, they did. No, they didn't. They, over a thousand people were killed over that. I they, just read about it yesterday. They asked people to turn them in. They went out and shot people, too. <clears throat> um, About six years prior to them making the guns illegal, they started making all guns uh, registered. And anybody that had a registered gun, so when they made them illegal... They called them and asked them to turn them in. Anybody that didn't turn in the ones that were registered, they went and asked for them. And that's probably what you're reading about. But they didn't go forcibly kick down door to door and gather up every gun in Australia. Six years after England banned handguns, they had the largest uh, demonstration in English history. The people demanding to get their guns back. (laughs) A little late. Wait, wait, did they get their guns back? No. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, in those the first six years, gun violence, gun crimes went up 40% after they took everyone's pistols. And they were, uh, what was it, this interview with this police officer. He said, six years ago, before the pistol ban, I carried a wooden stick and a pair of handcuffs. That's all he had said six years after the gun ban I have to carry a gun and I wear body armor (laughs) he said but they sold this off on it sold this on us that we're going to be safe by taking these guns away from people right I mean it's pretty hard to argue the statistics of whether uh, gun heavy people end up being less crime ridden the statistics are over and over and over again everywhere right that wasn't really the argument I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make the argument, obviously, that people aren't going to do cut, anything. Just cut to the chase, and the chase is, is you gather up. The mentality is to gather up all these guns for the eventuality of standing against a government that you totally see as legitimate, 100 percent. The guns are actually promoting us to stay enslaved mm-hmm. because as long as we have them, we have this fallback, so we don't actually have to stand for anything. You look at uh, how many how many people are in America? How many million? Thirty three hundred and some million. Three hundred and some million. The Philippines overthrew their government twice without a single firearm. They had the million man march two times in with the course of six years. Without a single gun. And their their military had guns, their government had guns. They just didn't want to um turn the whole Filipino population against them. So you have 300 million people. How many guns do you need? Personally? Well, now I understand. You know I'm a gun advocate. I've got a couple myself. That's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is we look at these guns as ensuring our liberties, but there's 300 million people in America. If they want a liberty, they'd have it. They'd have it in a heartbeat. Right, without the use of the gun. Right. The, The gun's actually having the opposite effect that... People are buying them to ensure their liberty, and they're having the opposite effect. 
I I 100% believe that that the our ability to own these guns and squirrel them away and fall back on them keeps us from standing up for anything that we know is right. I yeah, I think it's part of it, but I think people also we get used to whatever's going on. I mean, well, people are sure. Your tendency is to just sit back and go, whatever. What am I going to do about it? I wrote something the other day that our children will see um, um, the things that we see as tyranny today as their liberties. Yeah. And I, I so I, I mean, I think that's in keeping with what you're trying to say. But <clears throat> what I'm saying is, is um, people tend to view the gun. I mean, you, you listen to any group of right winger type guys talking what do they say the conversation always ends up with when the government comes to take our guns we're going to do this and that it's that mentality that keeps us enslaved no yeah i agree i know Hmm. you got to do something before they come take the guns when they come and take your guns it's kind of well i mean it it, it comes to that point when you're going to do something i mean you saw the government as legitimate up to that point well, and, and what if they never do come to take guns? What if they just simply do an end right. run around all of I mean, look at look at all of the other freedoms. I mean, you have a co- copy of the Pocket Constitution, right? Not uh, on me. Okay, well, look at this. Amendment 1. Amendment 2 is the gun thing. Amendment 1. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. You can't go out and have an assembly... Without a permit. Right. And now you can't be so many feet from an official exactly. without getting canned. You you will get arrested if you even set foot with the with the purpose of protesting over there on the federal um, federal property. Yep. And even more now and we know somewhat thanks to our good friend Frank Turney for reminding us daily there's also the right to trial by jury and the right to be secure in your home without in your papers and your possessions to be secure. You can't be violated without due process of a warrant. And I noticed uh, or unless they that, can that's the that's the Fourth Amendment. I mean, right. that, they, they, people don't even know what's in it, and they don't care that they've lost everything. The Constitution is and the Bill of Rights are worthless. Oh yeah, and that's what I'm saying is that the reason I think that we're in that state is because of the firearms. I really think I think that we would be without them, but I know what you're saying because we have that fallback. Oh, look at the Philippines. They I overthrew hope... their government twice. Because they were tyrannical, they overthrew right. them twice without a single without a single gun. No, I hear you. I know. All right, we got some lines. We have uh, phone calls piling we got up some on lines. Every... I didn't. I'm not that tired. Wow. <laughs> no, we've got phone oh, calls. phone lines. Phone lines are piling up. If you guys want to take a phone call, you don't have. To. Were you going to read something? Or? I was saving it. Oh, well, savor the moment then. What have we got? All right. Yeah, let's take Four it. five eight. Talk the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, this is here, Billy. How y'all doing today? <laughs> oh, good. How are you doing? Oh, it's a beautiful Sabbath morning for me, man. I'm enjoying myself. And I was talking to my little two-year-old granddaughter, of course, about potty habits and it just came to me and it it applies to government there's people who believe that everybody needs help to go potty and there's people who believe that we can go potty by ourselves you know what I mean (laughs) and some people just never outgrow that and they just don't think that I can go potty by myself but believe me I can I'm I'm going to take your word on it (laughs) see what I mean but I do I do see a greater awakening amongst a dwindling number of people, which is called, you know, sifting. Okay, you right? know? We had the we had the Patriot movement and everybody got all excited. Even here in town, several hundred people got excited. But many are called and few are chosen. But I do appreciate what you're saying today about the idea that that what? piling up guns only makes you more of a slave because it gives you the complacency. Yeah. And if you're not going to shoot the government over what they've done to you so far, well, you're never really going to shoot the government anyway. That's right. why I don't advocate shooting the government. You're absolutely right. And, and even if you, in your head. And yep. even if you did come to that point, you saw everything so much so, as being legitimate, you would end up opting for the same thing, even if you came out on top. Point. You would that's instill it yourself. All revolutions fail because revolutions, by their nature 
are simply a group of people saying we wish to govern ourselves, which is another way of saying we just want to change masters. Yeah, we've heard them. You're not going to win. We've the heard it on. needs to take place is to say I don't need government. Right. Personally, I don't need government. We've Therefore, heard. Therefore, I ignore them, and you know what? They'll ignore you back. We've they heard that anyway. on this show. Yeah. We've had people call in and you know advocate revolution, and then we're going to throw them off and blah blah. And then and we they said, ask then, him, well, what then what? Then what? Mm-hmm. He goes, well, then we got to find a good guy to govern us. <laughs> find a new <laughs> leader. <laughs> <laughs> what? God. And what what well, patriot movement it. were you referring to there? I'm talking about the latest one in America. We had the moral majority in the 80s with Reagan. Yeah. He said they was going to change things. And then we had this other little one. It wasn't even as big as the moral majority this time. It's oh, I thought, you, the tea party. I tea thought party. you were talking about the uh, patriot movement going on in the 90s. That was... No, the free, the free, ra- the free range one. patriots? <laughs> no, the... Uh... The uh, sovereign citizen. Movement. There is a pretty big movement. In the well, the sovereign citizen movement exists, and you know the the Birch Society exists. All yeah. I'm saying is, all of them ignore the wave of history. There never was a free nation on this planet up till the U.S. It was only free until the Constitution, and then it became enslaved. There were free people running around doing their own thing until the Constitution. And yeah. then the slavery has come back. That was it. That was that one little blip. Eleven whole period. years. Eleven, yeah. eleven whole years of his free. freedom. <laughs> what? The do, you, do you think that that blip of well, freedom and the reins it held on government for at least a time is the prosperity we see the world around today? I don't think that it had any reign on the government at all. The only people that were ever free were the people who ran off into the Appalachians and over into the Ohio Valley and finally across the Mississippi. My people crossed the Mississippi in 1769 to get away from the Revolutionary War. They already saw it coming. They was Quakers. Yeah. And so they moved across the Mississippi and lived with the Indians. They were free. No man told them what to do. The man, my, my ancestor, had ten sons, and he married every one of them into an Indian girl. And he had his own tribe of people. They were hillbillies up in southern Missouri until my grandpa finally left the hills, and then my dad, and I and I come up here, and I'm going back to the hills. But well, that's the only way to be free. It's the only way ever to be free, is to get far enough out of Babylon that they forget about you. And that's the only ones that are going to be saved in the end, according to the Bible. I don't mean save salvation your soul. Jesus will save your soul for free, but you got to save your own butt. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to quit calling this show then. Uh, no, 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 no. Are you no trying? The righteous... The righteous is bold as a lion. I do not believe they will come to get me because I don't have anything. I have no place to lay my head. I don't own land. Well, I've got a, a little bit of land, but it's not my name. It's my wife's name. But it's just like monopoly pieces. It's coming and going. Anybody want to buy a piece of land? I got one outside of Burrow. But I'm going to the hills where they won't find me. Look, there's people go down in airplanes, and they don't get found when they're looking for them. Mm-hmm. Telling me I can't move out to the middle of nowhere and they won't find me if I don't want to be found. My people have been living in Missouri Hills and they was never bothered. And they made liquor and the Federals never came for them. Nobody ever bothered them. They was Quakers living up in the hills doing their thing. I like to eat me some bad. liquor making Quakers. <laughs> liquor, liquor making Quakers. I make wine. I make cognac. You know how you make Alaska oh. cognac? Huh. Take five gallon of wine that you made in the summertime. And you wait till it's 40 below zero, and you step outside with a five-gallon bucket of wine and a steel, stainless steel bucket. And then you just, with a whisk, you just take out the ice until it condenses down to what you want, and then it's cognac. Oh, nice. Hot <laughs> dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go enjoy my freedom and let I'm you get back to after that. No, you know, I, 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 you know, I really do appreciate you calling in because it, it stirs people to start thinking past the, the I mean, to, to think outside the box. Of what kind of revolution are we going to have next week? No. Believe me, brother. Get outside of it. I love it. They come for me. You all better be hiding because I am a peaceful man. There's no reason for them to come to me. I don't own much of anything. I live free. I do my own thing. And anybody that's, that's willing a good to give to up Babylon for freedom still has that ability. That's my that's my sermon for you today. You can, but yeah, you got to give up everything else and right. learn to do it on your own. But I'm enjoying it. Remember, Randy Weaver lived out in the middle of nowhere and had nothing and wanted to be left alone. I know, I know. And what was what was their provocation? Come and get him. 
I'll let you, I see it in the music, so you can think about that, and I'll take my answer. What well, was the provocation to come and get Randy Weaver? Shotgun. Um, out there in Idaho. It was about weapons, wasn't it? Well, it was about a shortened shotgun, uh-huh. but the whole point was they were trying to get him to infiltrate the Aryan Nations for him. Another great FBI plot that went I just got some kids and women shot. Who cares? Yeah. 458 Talk is the number. That's the break, Sharon. Were they brown? Because if they were, it's all right. All right, and welcome back to the uh, first hour here of... Hey, let's just call it what it is. This is our one of Patriots event, isn't it really? Yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. We call it uh, the Saturday morning wake up call. But uh, you know, I I, I do appreciate uh, Timothy calling in there. The hillbilly. Uh, it, it is kind of a wake up call for the rest of us when it comes down to the idea of are we going to ignore the government? I really like what he talked about uh, about ignoring the government instead of trying to go out and force them to change. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, now I was thinking some about what, what you're saying with uh, you know we have our guns, last line of defense. If they take those, blah blah blah, and we don't do anything, but Americans do think they do something because they vote. We almost forgot about that. I they try to vote about stupid things. So when they vote, that's their. That's what they're doing. And they say, well, don't tell me I don't do anything for liberty. I voted for Mitt Romney or whoever, you know. So in their mind, they are do, doing something. They're voting. Now they're doing something that's worthless and has never, will never, is intended not to give them any liberty. It won't ever. It's not going to change Jack Diddley. But in their mind, because they've been so ingrained, it's been ingrained in people's minds since they're little kids, at the re-education schools, that you are doing something for your freedom when you vote. The people listen to Sean, and they have those little freedom talks and little liberty talks, and people are, ah, ah, the revolution is on, vote today. <laughs> Oh, we're so screwed. Well, not, but as a, I shouldn't say we. Some of you guys are all screwed. Some of us aren't. If you don't view liberty as a as a singular thing for each individual, then voting is doing something. Well, yeah, every every time you vote, you're you're basically taking away somebody else's freedom, aren't you? Yeah. Right, but if you you're trying, if um if you agree with the state mentality and that we're all a collective, then voting voting is doing something. Right. You basically you can't agree with individual liberties and vote. That's the problem. <laughs> Want to take that? Four five eight yeah, talk is the number. Here. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello. Good morning. Hi, Joe. Joe. Joe, go ahead. Uh, a couple Good. things. Good. Well, one is about the uh, the school over there in Connecticut. It's kind of an irony that the uh, the gun shows have stopped selling guns and all that business, when in fact, one of the things I read yesterday, which was not surprising, is that the new school where the kids are at are loaded with uh, officers with guns protecting them. Hmm. I mean, it seems kind of weird that they would say, uh, you know, the people in the neighborhood that are pro-gun would suddenly clam up when in fact the town is apparently saying just the opposite. Well, that's one thing I had. The other thing is, you know, the Middle East is full of guns, collision across every, and they're not illegal. All countries have them. All people have them. They nobody seems to question whether they have them or not. They use them at weddings and everything else. And the thing is that uh, notice when uh, someone has guns, uh, the way they kill each other is not with guns. They use explosives. And that is exactly the problem that I'm worried about in this country: is that if they get rid of the guns. People are going to treat you know this explosive you can blow something up with. There's probably something within 20 feet of you that you can make an explosive out. Of. It's everywhere. Everything can blow up. It can be chemically set up to blow up. So basically, well, we, we're really, really lucky we have guns because if someone comes into a situation and shoots somebody, at least we've seen who did it. They are there and they are risking themselves. Uh, if they set off a detonator with a cell phone. Nobody may ever find out who they are, and they could set off lots of them. They've killed not just one, but dozens of people. 
Yeah, instantly. We're, we're going down the wrong road here. Let's keep the guns. They're the better of the possibilities. Well, I don't think it was ever about keeping people safe. What? Right. He just means in the general public's thought pattern, keep the guns because there's much worse things that people will turn to if they can't get a hold of a gun. If they don't have it. Yeah. You bet your life. I, I mean, think of yourself. Uh, if I were going to get somebody and I didn't have a gun, I think about, hmm, wow, we could blow something up here. Yeah. Huh. I mean, it's, it's a it's an easy thing. To, in fact, little kids are normally in a situation where they're blowing stuff up with their experiments. They don't normally have guns to play with, so they're blowing stuff up all the time. You know, hydrogen, uh, whatever, whatever they have. And, uh, and it's just, uh, I mean, a settling, for example. You know, you can blow a whole building up with a settling. And uh, that's, you know, this is a settling all over town here. It's everywhere. Are, are you giving people tips or? What? <laughs> no. I'm just, what? I'm just uh, kidding. No. I, said, I said, are you giving people tips? But I, I was just well, kidding. I, don't, I don't give anybody tips. I mean, nobody nobody has to have a tip because, uh, I mean, if, if it comes to the point where you can't talk about it, that's where we're in the greatest danger. I'm sure that I'm sure that it's not on the radio over there in uh, uh, Iraq, for example. They had uh, big explosions the other day. I don't think anyone on the radio is giving them the recipe. Right. I think I think they know how to do it. Yeah, it's and, pretty uh, common knowledge, unfortunately. Well, yeah, and well, even if you don't have uh, explosives, I mean, look what what our troops encountered in Vietnam with all the uh, the punji, yeah, punji sticks. Punji. I mean, it's 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 one of those things where you use what you can to create. If murder is in your heart, you're going to find a way to murder people. Of course, and, and the gun the gun thing is uh, it's. I don't even know what the argument is about. I mean, we have a constitution of protection for the guns. Uh, I wish that they would just stop talking about it. And, and he's and he, the president's making threats. You know, he's got a, this unspoken threat where we're having Biden, we're having everybody doing something. I don't understand what they're talking about. The gun is protected, and uh, if they're going to uh, if they're going to start uh, wasting our time with that, then uh, we got to get them out of it. They should have just been not elected. I don't know why. Half the people we elect are elected anyway. Well, of course, you're always saying that people don't pay attention to what's going on, and it's a fact. Of course, people can't pay attention because it's so complex and so much of it's going on, and there's so much propaganda in every direction. <laughs> a, a normal person has a hard time ferreting out the truth. Well, yeah, because a normal person's got a busy as life trying to make a living or taking care of his family. There's so exactly. many other, or the distraction parts, you know, that football game or whatever's going on. The, the, well, uh, you, you know, you've done enough reading to know that Plato didn't like democracy, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> and with good reason. Yeah, it, it's a it's a very unstable kind of government. In fact, the people who build the democracy, if they don't have any immigration control, they're going to find themselves voted out their own democracy. <laughs> that's that's a classic. Yeah, out of their own so, country. Anyway. Okay, I, I've said enough, but I basically just wanted to point out that I think the guns, I think that this action to guns against guns is, is absurd. I don't even know, I mean, I don't even have a gun, but I, I, I'm glad everybody else does. It's fine. They can have even they want. Yeah. I think it's silly for this argument. I don't even understand what's going on. Anyway. That's yeah. It. yeah. Well, I appreciate your Thanks, call. Sir. I haven't heard from you for a while. Thanks. Yeah, bye. All right. 458 Talk is the number if you'd like to call in and sound off on the issues today. And the other funny part about it, not funny, but the ironic thing is when they ban guns, I mean, we hear this all the time, then only criminals will have guns. And it's very true. Like we said a little bit ago, gun violence went up 40% in England six years after they banned handguns, like confiscated them, the normal citizen. Six years later, they have a 40% rise in violent gun crimes. So... When they tell us that they're doing it to make us safe, it's a lie. They're going to protect children. They're going to protect whatever. It's a lie. I mean, it's a good one. It's a good way to go about it because ultimately they do want to steal our guns from us. And, you know, the children are always the scapegoat. Well, we got to do it for the children. No matter what anyone does, it's always for the children. Then everyone just goes along because do you want to be against the children? Go back and address what he was talking about, how he said, well, you know what, the Constitution protects guns. Leave it alone. Does it really? Well, in theory, he's right. It should. But the Constitution also protects free speech. Right. I mean, obviously, the Constitution is of no effect. Otherwise, we wouldn't even be be having the conversation because 
If, it, if that was totally true, we wouldn't have the conversation because no one would even bring it up. Exactly. But how the, could they set down anything as uh, a set law and give power to a legislative body to create law? So you're talking well, about the, the, the fundamental rights, problem the with the Constitution. The Bill of Rights wasn't like that, though. That wasn't a... The amendments to the Constitution were the Bill of Rights. That was amending the Constitution that we... The, of these rights that were already known to the men at the time that you have the right to be armed. So we're going to throw that in, that we already know this, that you have the right to be armed. And this government now knows that this is one of the rights that can't be violated by it, which in the Ninth Amendment says, in fact, all of our rights can't be violated, which just goes in the face of government because government, by its very nature... Destroys, yeah. yeah, it destroys. Government takes and destroys everything. It ultimately will destroy itself. You just give it enough time, it will ultimately, especially democracies, they're doomed from the get-go. Well, like, governments destroy. No government can exist. Just like Mayberry told us that we're in our fifth form of government now. And I thought it was really interesting how he went along the lines of, okay, our first government was this, 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 and then... The Lincoln government, President Lincoln, is the one we're still basically under right now. Ultimate power, ultimate federal power. Federal government, central government. There are no states' rights. You don't even hear guys talking about nullification much anymore because, yeah, what's what good does it do? In Alaska, Mike got, Mike's... Stuff got thrown out by the state, right? So did uh, Schaefer Cox. Right. Their stuff got thrown out because the judge said that it was the evidence was gathered illegally, unlawfully. Well, the feds don't care. Well, under the Patriot <laughs> Act, they can gather it however they feel like. Right. It's really no different than uh, an officer, a local officer, manipulating somebody he's talking to into letting him search their vehicle or their home or something like that. Just because he got permission to violate him through manipulation, does that? It's, it's still not right. Yeah, history, or yeah, that's maybe the wrong word. It's always been common knowledge at common law that you cannot willfully give up any of your rights. Even if somebody tries to trick you into it, you can't no, actually you give cannot, them up. Cannot. It's a unalienable right that your unalienable rights you may not you cannot by definition give them up which is like what the the whole miranda rights thing is supposed to be about you should not can you do you want to waive your rights right well so it shouldn't even be a miranda law i mean that's just one of those other things like well it's against the law to murder well no duh well if you can give up your give up any of your rights or waive any of your rights and they wasn't they weren't a right they can exactly. right they can only be forcefully taken from you you cannot knowingly give them up you can you can't even unknowingly give them up they're your rights the only way they can be violated is to have them forcefully and violently taken from you and that's what the government does <laughs> That's what they're best at. Yeah, wait, that's what we all agree with, though. Not all. Quit I using those words. I'm tired of the we's and the all. When 99% of the people, you can say all and get away with it. No, not with me sitting over here. Because oh you keep looking at me when you say all. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't bother. He doesn't even bother looking at me anymore. You know. <laughs> Steve, have you looked at you? <laughs> I try not to. Yes, that's, that's why he says he's the face the made face for radio. Face made for radio, exactly. I look in the mirror and I scare myself. <laughs> All right. Sure. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Just Winston. Winston, what's on your mind? Oh, um, we're, we're, we're we've 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 had a major loss this 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 week. Uh, the final vote came in for Petersburg down there. Uh, uh, they lost by 170 votes. Uh, 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 um, the borough is going to, uh, they formed the borough down there. And now down in Nenana, uh, 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 there's an idiot down there that's formed one there. Uh, 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 freedom is slowly being stepped on 
and people are not standing up enough to to hold on to it. And I, I don't know. Uh, I, I was just curious as to, as to y'all's take on that. I agree, and thanks for calling. It's good to hear from you. The uh, It's slowly eroding. It's been eroding for a long time. I, I did hear about the jack hole down in the Nana that's trying to get that push through down there too and when you think about petersburg the uh so the minority is going to be enslaved by the majority by 170 votes because mm-hmm. obviously there were people that voted against and said no we don't want this enslavement and other there, people said, well, you're yeah. gonna have to have it there is another little uh, twist though in that story too is that one of the reasons why petersburg went toward a borough was because juno was talking about annexing them into their borough so those 170 people basically were going to get thrown in a cage one way or the other. Either they're going to be under Juno's overreaching, which, I mean, how far away from Juno is Petersburg? I mean, we're talking, it's the same area of southeast Alaska, but right. you know, would you like, it'd be like saying, you know what, we're going to go out there and we're going to incorporate Joy, in Joy, Alaska, into the borough here in Fairbanks, going way, way far away. Uh, the the Juno was talking about annexing in Petersburg because they wanted their tax dollars. <laughs> well, that's what it always comes down to is and, tax. And so the people in Petersburg said, hey, hang on, why don't we have our own borough? Tax and money. And then and then that way they're protected from Juno. Well, they're still going to get taxed by their own borough. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Who do you want to pay the tax to? Back to Winston's question, what do we think about it? The, uh, you know, freedom is slowly going away. I... I don't know exactly what to think about it, except for, um, well, to reference John Locke, the uh, people put up with abuses from the government on and on and on and on. They put up with it forever and ever and ever. And his theory was that they finally will say enough and throw off the chains that bind them. But I don't know when that time is, up to what point. I don't know. I mean, we have things so good here, supposedly, is why... I mean, people... You know, the poorest guy in America has a big screen TV. Poorest guy in America still, you know, overall, still has three meals a day or one good meal or whatever. So I think as long as we have it that good, what do we have to gripe about? I got plenty to gripe about, but I'm saying that overall, the general mentality is, well... They might right, be taking that away, but I still got myself a new snow machine. That's funny. I was trying to say snow machine. Snow machine, boat, what it, whatever it is. Whatever you can do to amuse yourself. I don't know. Is Winston still on? Yeah. Yep. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, I got um, uh, uh, this is sort of an aside, but it's 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 along the same route. Oh. Uh, uh, I got a quote here by uh, William Pitt. I'm, I'm hoping I can read it. Uh, uh, and he, it, it was William Pitt uh, testifying for the uh, the British House of Commons, and it was uh, I, I can't read it. It, it, it lies to them. But anyway, uh, uh, turn that uh, kerosene up. Huh? <laughs> <Not Yeah. that. laughs> Hang on, just a second. Yeah. All right. Uh, step outside. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, it's too fine a print uh, this right. early in the morning. Um, anyway, um, 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 he, he he said that uh, the 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 crown couldn't step in into a man's house, and uh, he said he said the roof on the house can be shaky, the the uh, 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 the wind could blow through it, uh, 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 the rain could come in, the cold could come in, but the the forces of the king could not enter into that uh, ruined habitation. Um, and we we overthrew that. Uh, 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 it, it, it's just uh, politicians always figure that they can uh, uh, that they can take from us. You know, if if you give them a chance, politicians will manipulate things where they can come in there and just do what they want to. Uh, 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 Patrick Henry, he was hostile as a Dickens about. The, the the first ten amendments to the Constitution because they're amendments. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, he wanted a bill of rights. Right. Uh, 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 something that the government cannot. What part of thou shalt not don't they understand? Uh, 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 now, we was talking about the borough there. Down here in the, uh, uh, the Delta area, uh, 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 we stepped on them pretty hard when they tried. I can't understand why these people are allowing these politicians and stuff to manipulate and weasel around and, 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 and let things go on. Uh, uh, you don't have to take a gun, take a baseball bat, clean a room out. Uh, uh, or at least uh, let your voice be heard. Oh, uh, 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 most definitely let your voice be heard. Down there in Petersburg, the the the, the city of Petersburg, uh, 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 there's some no borough signs po- posted up out there. The uh, uh, city employees went out there and tore the no borough signs down. Uh, 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 during that fight, why in the world people didn't just 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 come unglued? I have no idea. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I get kind of worked up about this sometimes. So it was mo- basically government mafia out there instituting more government mafia. All government, all government. Now this is my personal uh, 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 view on all government is nothing in the world but organized crime. Yep. Uh, That's the truth. That's not just your view. That is a fact. Right. It's just organized crime. Uh, well, uh, the worst uh, part is it's sanctioned crime. Yeah, because we allow it. That, he said it's sanctioned crime. He was too far away from oh, the you're microphone. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you take like uh, you you take a mobster and give him a gun, and you take a policeman and give him a gun. When each one of I those would feel guys, safer with the mobster, to be quite honest. <laughs> when each one of those shoots a person, if they both stood there and shot somebody, only one of those guys is sanctioned in that. Like if an if an officer stepped up to you and you had a pistol on, being an Alaskan, you were open carrying, and he steps up to you and he's open carrying, who's the one in fear? Because only one person can pull the trigger in that scenario and be sanctioned doing it, even though they would both be murdering. Good thing about right. the mafia is they just take your money and leave you alone, let mm-hmm. you go about your business. And uh, 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 Al Capone, I was told, was an honest man. Uh, if he, if you bought protection from him, you got protection, uh, uh, even from the government. Uh, the 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 part of it is is uh, uh, like getting back to the borough issue is is it's like the 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 mafia, the state mafia, uh, uh, gets their permission from the federal mafia. Uh, 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 to rape, pillage, and loot uh, in in this geographic territory, uh, uh, and then the state mafia they turn around and, and they tell some local politicians that they can rape, rape loot, and pillage uh, 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 in a certain geographical area. Just all they got to do is just you know share the cut. Uh, well, maybe if our show was on in Petersburg, we could have changed some of their minds, or at least right now we could be mocking them. Something good, right? right. I don't understand it. I know what you're trying to. I know what you're asking, and I do not understand it. the The majority of the people are just like that. I mean, uh, Albert J. Nock wrote about uh, Isaiah's job. I think it was what it was I, called. I, I, I'm, I'm I'm well familiar with that. That's a, that's an excellent piece of uh, right. Right, and and part of that was the at, uh, the Lord told Isaiah to go preach. King Hosea or whoever it was at the time. Hezekiah. Hezekiah was it? And he said, okay, and you're going to be no bones about it. Get out there and tell them how it is and rah, 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 and rah. Oh, by the way, they're not going to listen to you. Yeah, so what's yeah. the point? Well, the point was, and his point was there's always going to be a remnant out there. The Lord's point was his remnant, and Albert J. Nock was using that to mm-hmm. say that there is a remnant. Not everyone out there. They're going to drive you nuts. But there are some people out there that need to hear... There's more of us out there. You're not alone. No. There's a remnant. There are people that love liberty. You're one of them. People call us show. We know that they're out there. The rest of them just drive us nuts in the meantime. Right. Uh, if you ever come down uh, the Richardson Highway in the direction of Delta, uh, uh, not too long after you cross the town and all there, 
uh, there's a little business on the, on the hill up there. It's called the Remnant Road, and it's based exactly on on uh, 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 on, on that remnant that uh, uh, Knock was talking about. Really? Hmm. Yeah. What, look for what it. are they? Uh, what do they sell? What do they sell? They sell bunny boots and uh, 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 health boots and uh, log cabins and just uh, whatever they make a dollar off of. Huh. I have to go check that out. <laughs> yeah, I have nice. to go on a little road trip down there. <laughs> Thanks cool. for the call, Winston. Thanks, Winston. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Uh, Les. Les, go ahead. Yeah, just wondering, uh, you know, on the major talk shows, the conservative ones and uh, and uh, periodicals, or newspapers, whatever you read, they all seem to, at least maybe you guys know more about it and listen more than I do, but they miss the whole point about the Second Amendment being... 100% just to uh, take this government away if we had to by force. Uh, that's the only reason for the Second Amendment. It had nothing to do with hunting or nothing else. So I'm wondering uh, if what you fellows would say, if they made a law tomorrow that you could not have a 30-round clip in your AR-15, what should the general population then do? The general population? think they're going to have to make their own decision. I know what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> I yeah, mean, but the, the this is the world is we live in. You can't and hide and mm-hmm. put your stuff away and all that kind of business, but that's they still made you a slave if they put a law behind it and said... Oh, yeah, I know. That's I mean, that's what we're saying. That they're going to do what they're going to do, and people are just going to sit down and take it or whatever. I mean, I personally don't think you should get rid of them. They do not have the right to disarm us. Period. I think I think burying them just expounds the problem. Then you have it in your mind that it's buried and still accessible to you, so you're still not willing to do anything for your liberties. Right. And the talk show hosts, they got it all wrong. All they talk about is, wow, we have the right to defend ourselves against the bad guy. What about the bad government? All right. We're coming up on the Fox News here at the top of the hour. We have another hour. Patriots Lament is on the way right here on KFAR. All right, welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR, where for the next hour we're going to be talking about one simple concept, liberty. Gun control? Liberty! Gun control. That means using both hands as you bury it. (laughs) (laughs) Keep your hands off my guns, they're buried in my backyard. I... We got a funny story we have to tell, just because we like to keep people, you know, happy. so many bad things going on. Every once in a while, we need some good news or some happy news. Happy news. Happy face. Smiley face news. The things that you send, the stories you send to your friends, and then you put a little smiley face afterwards. So I don't remember what exactly uh, county it was, but a county down in Texas, Sheriff's Department, they were showing off the new gadgets that they got for the year, and they brought... They had the media come out. And, of course, they brought out their highly militarized and heavily defended armored car that was basically a troop carrier. Brought that out for all to see. And the media's out there filming all this. You know, they're giving their little presentation. And then they brought out their newest weapon, which was a drone. So they have a drone. So they're real proud of this drone. So they fly the drone. And everyone's taking pictures. And, oh, yeah. And the guy's giving his little speech about how this thing's going to help them and fighting crime and terrorizing people and surveilling the innocent they lost control of it while the media is taking the film of this thing and it crashed into their new armored vehicle and destroyed them both (laughs) oh that made my day it's all right they'll just jack the taxes i was gonna say somebody has to pay for that it's gonna be the people the good people in that county they gotta call dave easel and tell him to come down there and learn him how to fly him don't do it, Dave. Not even for the most money. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny? I mean, well, not really funny, but uh, sad, actually, that we've become so accustomed to being surveilled. Yeah, why do we need to be looked at all the time? What do you have to hide? I have everything to hide from you, Jack. Hole. Gosh. The whole thing about being free, isn't it? To be secure in your person. Why did they... Have, instead of what do you have to hide, how about... What do you need to see? What do they have to fear? Why are they 
Why are they so intent on trying to find out what I'm doing behind my closed door? Why do they want to? Why do they mistrust the American people so much that they want to disarm us? I don't know. I heard uh, rumor going around that people talking back and forth on Xbox Live when they're playing games have been getting visited by the FBI for comments they've been making. I heard that too. Hello. Open the door now. We were listening to your Xbox Live. You said naughty things on it. That's disturbing. Mm -hmm. You're playing a video game, which, by the way, most likely is a game where you're killing people. But you're in a state's role there. You know, you're over killing brown people and whatnot. So I guess it's not so bad. Russians. Yeah, sometimes you kill Black Russians. Black Ops too. Zombies. I was killing me some zombies Zombies last are bad. Night. Zombies are definitely bad. I can see that that being sanctioned. I got to level 20 by myself. I don't know. And that's you look so at the awesome. zombies as being a, a kind of a metaphor for federal bureaucrats. Then you wouldn't be able to shoot them. <laughs> no, they're just civilians. They don't wear uniforms. They're dead, but they're alive. <clears throat> anyway. Right, so, so if somebody making a comment. So that's okay to uh, murder people in um, fantasy land, but if you make comments that um, sound anti-government on Xbox Live, they'll come pay you a visit. Hello. Well, you're lucky if they knock. No knock warrant. Patriot Act, buddy. Bang. Yeah. And we got indefinite detention. Secure, indefinite detention of Americans without trial or anything is secure again in the National Defense Authorization Act of 2013, thanks to our good buddy, John McCain, who was incensed, literally. I was reading about this the other day. Him and Rand Paul are like in a war. John McCain wants to take him down because he was so resistant with the... Uh, indefinite detention of American citizens. What is with John McCain's brain? I mean, I know he got tortured and stuff. Is he trying to torture us back because we sent him over there? If that's right, if that's so, I mean, I get it, John. We should have been we should not have been in Vietnam. We should not have been a prisoner of war. Why do you want to throw us all in jail for whatever no reason? Well, I think it might be the Stockholm syndrome after having been a hostage of he, government. He wants he, to make us all hostages. Yeah, I think it might be. He's definitely a lunatic. The guy is a, I mean, seriously, that guy's a lunatic. Him and uh, Lindsey Graham, those two guys are like weird. And to think that I actually voted for him. <laughs> oh, I am so glad. Well, he was better than Obama because of. No, I think stuff. he's talking about when he's in Arizona. Uh, no, actually, uh, yeah, when I was in Arizona, when he was a senator, I voted for him. But then also, I voted for him for president. I actually, that was you voted the, for that man twice. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason why I pulled the lever in 2008 was because Palin was on the ticket. Right. That was the only reason. That I, I was, I mean, I'm, my mom and I, and you know, we, we've talked about this. How, uh, God bless her soul, she has drunk the Republican Kool Aid. And, and, and thinks that somehow that if you get the right man in charge, and then we'll all be okay. And oh, we went round and round about McCain, and I'm like, you cannot, you cannot honestly expect me to go out there and, and vote for him. And she's like, well, what are you gonna do? Vote for Obama? And I finally went out and voted for McCain because of Palin. And then, gee, what a big, great difference that made, right? <laughs> um, yeah, could you imagine if McCain was president? Jeez. Wow. We probably would all be in jail. I actually did a little dance when Obama got and voted over McCain. That would have been horrible. That guy's a lunatic. I mean, there's no other way to put it. So anyways, he is on Ron Paul. He wants his blood. Political blood. You mean Rand? Rand? Rand, yeah. Well, he probably hates Ron, too. Yeah, because the gun owners of America who, I think out of all the gun rights so-called peoples, they're way far away better than the NRA ever dreamed of being. Because gun owners of America are just flat out, these are our guns, don't touch them. We have the right to defend ourselves against you. That's their whole thesis behind the whole thing, their theory. So they were pumping some money and helping Rand Paul to defeat the indefinite detention, which that's different because how many gun rights advocate peoples or uh, organizations are fighting things like that? That's actually something, you know, we shouldn't have that. Not the NRA, guaranteed. No, they probably want it, especially for brown people. But, I mean, well, yeah, the NRA, what? The uh, Harry Reid is like their five-star general. They give him a glowing report every year. Wow, Harry Reid, he's all for gun rights. Of course, he'll throw you in jail and 
for no reason. They don't have to have a reason. They don't have to give you a trial. They don't have to do anything. But that's okay. As long as he supports a right to keep him bare arms so we can go hunting and shooting at your local NRA-affiliated shooting program. I just got a te- a, uh, an email from someone who is uh, asking, not, not asking, they're demanding that we reduce the frequency of the Fairbanks Help Wanted ads on the air or they're going to turn the dial permanently. No. They are threatening to not listen if we do not restrict the free access to or the, the, the airways for people. Don't those paid. folks pay you? Yeah. Yeah, well, well. Good, good having you on the show. Go ahead and turn that dial, <laughs> Jack. But I mean, that's that's the same philosophy that you get that that the whole democracy aspect of well, we don't like that, so we're going to vote and make that illegal. We demand that you do what the rest of us want to do. I actually really like those commercials, especially the guys that long name, amazing results. <laughs> Well, my favorite one is when she's playing the harp and she starts singing. He says, stop singing. <laughs> stop <laughs> singing. <laughs> That's awesome. How could he not like that? Oh, well. I guess he can listen to 970. They got Rush Limbaugh over there. Yeah, that's going to get a lot of goods. Let's take him. 458-TALK is the number. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Do it. Well, I was going to read something from Jim. Uh, Jim out in Kenai, he he wrote something that I had to post on Facebook. I don't do that very often, but I liked what he wrote so much that uh, I'd like to read it on here too. And it goes along with a lot of what we've been talking about today. And here's what he wrote. The unexamined premise is that it is perfectly sane and rational for the segment of society most deeply implicated in the violent deaths of innocent people to have a monopoly on legitimate violence. Embedded within that premise is the assumption that the same government that that monopolizes violence will have the exclusive privilege of defining legitimacy. For him, as for totalitarians of all varieties, that which the government does is innately legitimate, and those whom the government decides to kill have an inescapable duty to die. (laughs) Yeah, that's my favorite part right there. By invoking the mystical notion of the state authority... Government officials act as necromancers, transmuting such base acts as killing and robbery and coercion into noble acts of public policy. These people do what they do primarily because the populace at large accepts it as legitimate. It is for this reason that the people who actually do the killing, the soldiers, the internal occupying army of the FBI, DEA, ATF, etc., etc., including their local auxiliary forces, are praised instead of held in contempt for living off the hard-won earnings of the productive and then impressing them. So long as this applies, a violent revolution would be counterproductive. Even if successful, once it no longer applies, a violent revolution would not even be necessary. They are the weakest in the realm of ideas. This is where it is most advantageous and moral to attack them. That's basically everything we've been talking about today, mm-hmm. laid out in a much more uh, fancy form. Yeah, I like Jim. Yeah, that's it He's was really well written. It's uh, nope. it's it's everything we were talking. We've been trying to. If say I today. if I can summarize that in, in in my own words here to make sure that I've understood it, he's basically saying instead of trying to go after them force with force in terms of guns, that we should be going after them where they're weak, which is in the idea department. Right. Right, and it culminates in um, as as long as it's sanctioned, which that was our point in the first hour, as long as it's sanctioned, any kind of violent revolution would be counterproductive, even if it was successful. And once it's not sanctioned, you don't need then a revolution, revolution is not no longer necessary. So, I mean, I totally agree with that. There's there's never any point. That's what we we're what I was trying to say about us not about the guns being our detriment to our liberties is without them being our fallback we don't we, when we come to the point where we need them we don't even need them we could have our million man march right never at any time is the 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 need to use guns legitimate really my favorite part's your duty is to take the bullet 
<laughs> when they kill you. Wait a minute, we're government. You need to sh lay down and get shot. I've always thought that was amazing. Like when they take when the pictures of the Nazis, they dig these holes. They make the they make their victim dig a hole. Then they tell you to stand over the hole, and then they shoot you in the back of the head. What? I don't understand that. I would at least take a poke at the nose. Right before I got shot. Or maybe use my shovel. I don't know. I don't know what that mentality is. It's got to be that they think that for some reason the state-sanctioned violence is legitimate. Even to their own death. Otherwise, why wouldn't they revolt? We see the pictures of the Vietnamese, and you know, from the wars and stuff. And the communists shooting a guy in the back of the head or a woman in the head holding a baby or whatever. And they just sit there and all the people are standing there watching it going, dang it. Glad that wasn't me. Hmm. There'll be, you know, 300 people watching four people shoot 20 people. And they just sit there and cower. Or there'll be 300 people watching four or five people taser the crap out of somebody. Right. Or don't, there's a don't thousand taste, people. Don't taste me, bro. Or a thousand people standing there while a cop walks up and down a line with oh. a mace and sprays people in the face. But the reason they get away with it is because the violence of the state is legitimized in, in the people's minds. It ain't in mine. It's not in any of us in here. It's not legitimate. Until we get that in our mind, like what Jim was just writing, it's not legitimate. When yeah, we I, figure that out, it's over. We yeah. won't have to fight because the revolution will be won right here in the mind that we keep talking about. Take that example that you just gave of the cop walking up and down the line of the protesters, spraying them all in the face with mace. I remember seeing the pictures of that. And that was from the Occupy Wall Street movement not that long ago. Yeah. If, if some buddy off the street that wasn't wearing a costume that said, I'm a policeman, pulled out mace and started spraying people, what would the protesters have done? They would have beat the snot out of them. Exactly. Well, that's a good point. So what if some uh, Tea Party patriot who hated the the Occupy people and was just as mad at ever, as ever as the cops or just you know they were the ones that were all ticked off that how dare they be out in these parks they don't have licenses they're stinky they're blah blah blah. So these guys are sitting there. What if this Tea Party patriot who really loves the country went up there with a can of mace and sprayed all their face? Well, the state would have took them to jail for taking their glory. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The state would have shot. The state, you know, cop would have saw him, would have shot him. <laughs> hey, that's my job. <laughs> and that's, we're kind of making folly out of it, but it, it's a true story. If you would have done that, if anyone else would have done that, go to jail. Do not get out. And that's the point I was trying to make with a, with a guy open carrying and a policeman facing off with each other. Only one of those guys... Has a threat of jail. Only one of those guys can pull the trigger legitimately. So there's only one likely outcome in that. Right. When you look at all the cop shootings, or shootings by cops, I should say, in 2012, down there in Anchorage. What, what were they up to, nine? Yeah, they were having a heyday. People that, in, 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 I think in two cases, the guy actually was armed. Um, But in all the other cases, they were un... They, they, did not have firearms. I mean, that all bounces off of us because in the back of our minds... They must have done something to deserve it. Well, there's it. a certain amount of legitimacy to it in the back of our minds. Yeah, because it's the state doing it. That's why you have... That's why you can have a thousand people get rounded up into a car with four people with guns. Even though they're, they know they're getting marched off to die, in their mind, it's legitimate what's happening to them. They don't want it to happen, maybe, but in their mind, it's legitimate. In the people's minds that are watching it happen, even the people that didn't like it, it was legitimized. The only people that could resist the Nazis were other states, legitimately. Sure, and that's that's the argument that the the Nazis made when they got taken in for the Nuremberg trials. Right. Is that they were legitimate because they were obeying the state. And it's interesting that... And the people themselves saw it as legitimate. Right, and to... Well, that's why we all look back on World War II and saying, well, that was the last great war. Yep. Yeah, that was a crock of crap, but we don't need to go on. That should, be, that should come up for on another show sometime. The big four, Hitler, Winston Churchill, Stalin, and Roosevelt, four of a kind... 
Anyways, we can take some calls. Four five eight up. talk is the number. Good morning, call. Are you still with us? Hello, are you there? They fell asleep. Apparently, they were so intent upon what they had to say that they could not stay with the program. Maybe their minds exploded. Well, I you make my head explode all the they time. They didn't have it wrapped. <laughs> Get the duct tape out. I, I'm I'm trying to to capture in my own mind what I would do. I don't know if I if I if I could go and and physically resist a cop. Yeah, I'm not saying to go out and start physically resisting cops either. I'm just saying that <clears throat> that's the that's, legitimacy of it. The people legitimizing it. It's just you have these huge mobs, huge crowds, all this and that. And two or three state mm-hmm. costume wearers can control them because everyone says, oops, that's legitimate people. Even though we're out here protesting them. <laughs> why did why did the Romans stop throwing Christians to the lions? People got tired of it. They're like, eh. Actually, Romans used to jump in sometimes and try to defend them because they were just like, this is sick. They don't even put up a fight. You just sit there and get eaten. Wasn't it? Part of mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe that has something to do with the people digging a hole and having their, you know, getting shot. That, that perhaps it was it was along those lines of saying, I'm not going to resist you. I'm not going to do violence to you. You can do whatever you want to to me, and people will judge in the future that you are wrong hmm. and illegitimate. Maybe so. I don't think so. I mean, not wholly. Some some instances, I think so. But I think some of them, I don't know. I mean, because a lot of people were mad when those dudes sprayed those kids with the mace. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was pretty disgusting. The guy's just walking up and down this fat gut like he's some kind of somebody. Somebody should have maced him. See how he likes it. You know, it's funny that we can use weapons on your own people that you can't use on in wars. Like, our state can use chemicals against us that they can't use in wars. They can shoot us with bullets that they can't use in wars. Like, you can't you can't go to war with a maximum penetrating and expanding hollow point. It's against the Geneva Convention. It's inhumane. Right. But you can shoot your people with it. <laughs> That's what I love about states. They fight each other, and they make little rules because they're like, hey, you can't kill all my guys. i got to have someone to beat up and steal from. <laughs> So they make rules up, but then they say, but whatever you want to do to your own people, yeah, that's pretty cool. Right. CS Gas, for instance, isn't... Um... We didn't go to war to save the Jews. America didn't go to war to save the Jews. No, we didn't even know about the Jews until the war was basically over. We wouldn't have cared. We wouldn't have done anything. That wasn't the point. The point was once he started... You know, that um, actually, it's a like... whole bunch of Jews boarded a boat... And set sail for over here, like 3,600 of them. And they were turned away everywhere they went. They went to South America, they were turned away. They came here, they got turned away. And they went back to Germany, and every single one of them got killed. Funny, South America accepted the Nazis after the war. Yeah, they had more money. And so did we. Actually, we put some of them in government. <laughs> yeah, let's take them. 458 talk the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning. This is Claudia. Claudia, what's on your mind? Good morning. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Uh, you know, I was thinking about, I wonder if it has something to uniform, you know, because you put people in uniform to sexually assault people in the airport, and everybody's outraged, but, you know, everybody accepts it. So I think that brings some kind of uh, respect, or I don't know what, what it is that people comply with the people in uniform. That if it was, they're not in front, probably nobody would accept that or tolerate that. Well, if you look at uh, history, Himmler and Hitler both were very, um, very aware and very keen on uh, the ability of a uniform to bring about compliance, not only in the people that see the uniform, but the person that's wearing it. Um, Hitler made use of all kinds of trinkets to promote that, from uh, ceremonial daggers to certain kind of awards. But Himmler was very specific on keeping his guys in a black uniform that was uh, made a certain way 
because it brought the most amount of fear and respect and loyalty out of that person. The person wearing it was extremely loyal to the giver of that uniform. There's a lot to be said for the way a uni uniform is viewed from the person wearing it and from the person viewing it. And those guys recognize that. Goebbels, mm. if you read any of their writings, Goebbels, Himmler, Hitler, and Goring all wrote about the use of the uniform for, com for compliance, both ways. Compliance from the person that they put it on and their loyalty to them and compliance on the people that look upon it. No, that's a good point. You look at even soldiers and the difference in United States soldiers when you put when you put that uniform on, there's like a transformation that happens in your own mind. Yeah, yeah and, and the brown folks over there, because they just wear rags and stuff, we see them, well, those aren't soldiers, those are terrorists. Yeah, exactly. All right, we're up against the clock here at Fox News at the bottom of the hour. More Pedro's Lament on the other side. It's KFAR. Fox News is now. And welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio, but we're streaming live online at KFAR660.com and on your smartphone with the free TuneIn Radio app. All right, what, I gotta what, watch that when I go home again. To get us back on track, what we were just talking about before the news was this aspect of putting on the uniform that for the person who puts it on, it gives them a sense of authority and a sense of legitimacy in what they are being commanded to do. Right. E even if what they are being asked to do goes against what they would normally do on their own, they're following orders. Or what we affectionately like to call it, criminals in costumes. Right. And then people who see the costumes, they have been trained to uh, recognize a certain... You know what, I think that a great example of this is the stormtroopers in Star Wars. Ooh. If you ever have you ever seen um, people in stormtrooper outfits? You're treading on thin ice right now. Steve. Oh, I'm, no, I'm just saying. Let's not defiling anything. I'm not defiling anything. Okay. I, I went to a run a couple uh, a year or two ago. Bank run? No, running like oh. on my feet. Oh. With and I took a, I took two of my kids with me, and there was a whole squad of stormtroopers. Actually, the guys dressed up in the Star Wars costumes, the stormtroopers. And it was so funny to watch little kids walking up and saluting the stormtroopers. I always thought they were the bad guys. I did, too. But there's something about the uniform that that does ev and it draw out of a person this idea of, well, this person obviously has been invested with some kind of authority or they wouldn't have been given the uniform in the first place, right? I don't think the... Uh the thoughts going through a guy's head that it's running a concentration camp and the thoughts going through a guy's head that's spraying a whole line of protesters is too far different. As far as, far as what they see they're legitimately able to do. Yeah, and they, they legitimately, in their mind, it's not legitimate. We're using that word facetiously. In their mind, anything they do is legitimate. And they have the full force of the state to back them up on it. Whoa, that's a blinding light right there. That's the that's the hotline going off. We're getting a getting a call on the bat phone. Well, let's take every line but that one. All right, we, we we can do that. Good morning, caller. You are not on the hotline. Who is this? State your name, and we'll let you go. Hello. Hey, who is this? Uh, this is Larry. Larry. Let me, uh, come on, radio off. That's a good idea, or otherwise we'll be hearing ourselves in stereo, oh. stereo, stereo, stereo. Yeah. What? what? Yeah. Um, my thoughts on the uh, on the uh, confiscation, look at uh, Canada's registration. It damn near bankrupt Canada to, to, to register everybody, and, and uh, I don't know if you remember that several years ago when they, when they abandoned that program. And uh, also... Uh, under a state's rights, can we get a, Alaska to pass a law to tell the feds to, um, that they would have to pay for any and each firearm, any accessories, ammunition, etc., fair market value, before they could legally confiscate it? That's what they did in Australia. 
Australia, they paid for any gun that got turned in. I'm not sell. Mine aren't for sale. Though. That, that's still eminent. Do- that 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 idea that eminent domain is that someone they still have the right to take your gun as long as they co- compensate you for it. No, I'm just saying don't don't challenge them. They'll take you up on it. They'll just they'll print some well, money and they pay can you print for the them. money and pay for them. Yeah, and good luck getting the state to do squat. They'll probably bankrupt the government. No, they can to, print to, money to, though. To every every individual that has a firearm. It would bankrupt the government. Not if they. How do you figure? They just make up more money. You know, we we need look at what they're doing right now with the debt ceiling. We've already got so much debt that by law we're not supposed to have, and they just keep jacking up the limit. You got a point there. Yeah, they just print the money. I mean, what better cause can a status think than to go into more debt to buy everyone's guns from them? or accessories or anything like that. Yeah, they would spend a lot of money, but they'd definitely do it. And it would be at a devalued cost, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Price. I mean, you wouldn't get full well, all, market all, value. All, the so-called all they'd have to do is uh, create the money to buy them, and they inflated the money, so they'd be paying less for them. Well, look at all the so-called <laughs> gun buyback programs that are going on right now in different cities around the country. 100 bucks. Yeah. That'd be a great price well, to pay. I'd love to get a fire gun. If you prefer market value, bucks. like I, I've got a 22 rifle that, that uh, it's worth a hundred, um, oh, probably about a hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, but I've got more ammunition than the, the cost of the gun. Yeah. You go buy a brick of ammo. That's that's twenty dollars. I've got I've got ten bricks of ammo. And that's two hundred dollars. That's that's more money than a gun's worth. But it, it, but that means nothing to them because they yeah. the, the the money is basically made up for them anyway. Appreciate the call, thank you. You're actually more evil the more that you have, I think. Yeah, exactly. Four five eight talk is the number. Good Why morning. Why do you need two bricks of ammo? Is this the hotline? That's no, this thousand. is not the hotline yet. Well, Good morning. You Are you still there? The hotline. That's the deal. All right. I'm not hearing anybody on this line. Let's go to the next one. All right. Oh, and yeah. now we're to the hotline. Good morning. Hi, Jim and Kenai. That was Aaron's fault. Jim I'm and sure Kenai. Hey. Um, having, you know, something that was really uh, enlightening for me was back during the Davidian standoff, I worked gun shows for our local Second Amendment group, and I was amazed at the number of gun owners who were just couldn't trip over themselves to distance themselves from the Davidians. Not that, you know, they weren't nuts or whatever, but, you know, they were so anxious to say, well, they can take their guns, just not my guns. And this was Ron Paul's message for the whole time he was in Congress, is liberty is one unit. And once you, once you sanction the stripping of somebody else's liberty, you've, you've undercut your entire foundation for defending your own. This is why this, the, the NRA is actually accelerating the, uh, the loss of our liberties in toto and why, we, you know, why I like GOA so much better. But liberty is one unit, and uh, you know, gun owners are now about to start to to feel the effects of this, and they need to take this as an as a as an impetus to reexamine what they think the freedom is that they that they cherish. Is it really just the guns? If it's really just the guns, then some of the anti-gun people who say it's you know it's a fetish, they, you know, they may have something, but you know, it's it's a total picture, and it took me a while. To figure this out, but it was a, a lot of it was centered around that that whole episode with the Davidians and and just you know the the realization that for so many people it was uh, the guns were the were were it, I don't know took the place of the substance of liberty and I appreciate you guys and and the work you do on the radio. Right, I I like to say that freedom is a state of mind, but liberty is actually a state of being, and it, that's essentially what you're saying. Yeah, if you don't defend your neighbor's liberty, it doesn't yeah. matter what it is, and yours are gone. What? It's the old thing is when they came for the Jew, I wasn't a Jew, so I didn't care. When they came for this guy, I wasn't that guy. It's the same thing here. Well, when they took away the guy's right to smoke pot, I didn't care because I'm not a dopehead. When they took away this right, I don't care. I'm not a this or that. Well, when they got those weird guy's guns away, I wasn't so worried about it. <laughs> all right, we're all, everybody in America is free in their mind, but none of us have any liberty at all. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Wow. Thanks, Jim. Or thanks, actually, Jim. it's a symbian cycle. Oh. Right, because liberty is not an idea. Liberty, a liberty is actually... Oh, you're not going to start that. No. Because no. I read up a little bit. <laughs> All right. 458-TALK. Oh, thanks for the call. Is yeah. the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hi, this is Mr. Joyce. Hey, Joyce. What's on your mind today? Good morning, gentlemen. 
I would like to speak up on behalf of Schaefer Cox today. His okay. sentencing is coming up uh, the 8th, which is just a few <laughs> days from now. And I would like to request that people um, send an email to his attorney asking for the judge to consider leniency for him. I do not believe that he is deserving of any 60-year sentence for for the charges that were trumped up against him. He is a family man, a businessman, a public-spirited member of the Fairbanks community, and I think that we should not leave him out hanging high and dry. Do you have yeah. his uh, lawyer's email or anything like that? Yes, sir, I do. And here it comes. His attorney's name is Peter Camiel, and that's the email is Peter Camiel at yahoo.com. That's P E T E R C A M I E L at yahoo.com. Please send him an email today. And he'll present those to the judge. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah, very much thank for the you. phone call. Four five eight talk is a number. You know what? Before we go on, I I, I don't want to go off too much on the the Schaefer Cox thing, but here's a great example. I mean, most people recognize that Schaefer wasn't playing with a full deck. And in, in terms of you know, well, he's a little bit on the crazy side. But if you're going to talk about defending liberties, here's a great example of it. Here's somebody who's facing who was charged on something that any any number of people could be charged with because of he didn't actually did he murder anyone? No, and the, the did, the did he biggest, actually kill anyone? No, and he was f- found guilty of conspiracy to murder a non-existent person. I mean, ultimately the charge that he was nailed with was when they they supposedly had some armed people out at the North Pole KJMP or whatever, because they thought there was this hit squad, and, you know, maybe that was all made up or he was having fun or whatever, thought this federal hit squad was going to be there to shoot him. So if they come, shoot him. There was no federal hit squad. There was not even, those were non-existent people. That's yeah, but what he Josh, still if you're threatening to kill people, if you're threatening to kill the state, even if it's a non-existent entity of the state, that's a pretty big crime. Hmm. Hmm. 458 talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, what's on your mind? I just want to say I thought the Patriots Lament show from November 17th, Saturday of uh, 2012, was really good. That was the show in which you were discussing the Schaefer Cox case, and you were also discussing the Michael Duke show that had occurred a few days earlier on November 14th. I had copies of both of those shows. And yesterday, I gave... Do, do you supply those to the FBI? Yeah. No, I... Actually, could you send me a copy? Because our... I'm serious here. Our... Uh-huh. Our... The uh, station, it only kept 19 minutes of it. Oh, yeah. I got it the got... whole show. It was only a one-hour wow, show that cool. that day because at the 10 o'clock hour, yep. uh, it was the auction. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I sure can. I sure can. That would be great because yep. we haven't been able to post... Was, well, I we here, was I here that day? I believe I don't remember, but we only got to post 17 minutes of it. Yeah, you were here. Yeah, I was here. Then we definitely need it. Yeah, I gave a copy to Maria <laughs> Renzel, and oh, yesterday I gave a copy to Richard Neff. Richard Neff is the contact person for Schaefer. He's known. He's he's. I met him for the first time yesterday. I had called him a few days prior. But uh, uh, if anyone would like to know more about Schaefer Cox, as he talks to Schaefer Cox, he's known the family since they've been up here. Um, and, and Schaefer when he was growing up and everything. And uh, anyway, Richard Neff's number is three eight eight six eight zero two, and he and he's the guy I got the Peter Camille at Yahoo dot com email address from also. Okay. And he'll be going down there soon. I get, I think to the tri- to the uh, sentencing. So uh, let me give that number for Richard Neff once again three eight eight six eight zero two and josh how should i get this uh copy of the november 17th show to you um bring it to the station and i can get a copy yeah you could do that okay i'll drop it to the station and then i can also and then i can also upload it to our uh, website too thank you very much randy Randy. i appreciate that you know also are these microphones here to any of the people in the two for one the lawyers of the two for one case or whatever if they ever want to come in here and give their side of the story Wide open. Come on in. You can have the whole hour. You can have two hours. If you don't, you don't care to hear it. I would love. No, I. I would love to hear the other side of the story from them. 
about the trial. I mean, because they know a lot of stuff that we don't know about the behind the scenes stuff, the garbage that was hidden that they didn't, the good things that they didn't let come out. That needs to be told, not yeah. the FBI side of the story. Who? Cares? Anyways, well, I don't you, care what they have to what, say about it. One of it. the biggest issues about this whole case is that very, very few people were actually at the trial. And a lot of the things that I hear people say about, well, Schaefer didn't do anything, not exactly true. Uh, I, 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 was, I was affiliated with him, and one of the reasons I distanced myself from him was because of the words coming out of his mouth that were words of violence and of murder. And, and so, I, to me, I'm not surprised to see him in a conspiracy to commit murder. Because I heard him speaking that way a full year before he was charged with anything. Just, right. I mean, I just, I don't want to make him into and you a didn't martyr. Turn him for, into the state, so I don't understand why Steve's not in jail. Because, uh, because I, I didn't turn him. Oh, He's actually it? Steve's on my list of possible number threes. Oh, and, and, oh right. And, 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 I yeah, forgot about that. Wow. Steve is a possible number three. You I know what? Yeah, have you, have it's you, better uh, than being a number two. Have you seen I'm my glasses? I am I am the man on the grassy knoll. I mean, if you think about it. I, <laughs> yeah. All right. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hi, this is Dave. Dave, what's on your mind? I'm part of an endangered species. It's been going on for 30, 40 years. Small gold miner. So you're Small brown independent people? gold miner. Okay. Is presently outlawed by the regulations by the state and especially the federal EPA Corps of Engineers. Hmm. We've been having meetings. What do we do? And I, I really appreciate your show. I've listened to it a long time. I've talked to Josh before at Natalie's meetings. Oh, yeah. What do we do? I have done civil disobedience for 20 some years. But what do we do as a group? We are a minority, we have no political backing. We have no backing by the, quote, law, whatever the hell it is. Um, Are you guys organized at all? I mean, yeah, they have you, been organizing, infighting? but it, it's, you know, what are you talking about, 20 people? Yeah. Um, we're a minority, and we have no backing, and all we can do is civil disobedience. And I just wanted Josh's opinion on, on civil disobedience. And, and we're lined up to be martyrs. There's already cases of the... Yeah, I'm glad nobody ever asked me questions like that. I get to stay safe. Yeah. I get the target. Yeah. The, oh, uh, thanks, Dave. I'm all for that. But I don't think you need to go... Uh, don't, don't be violent. There's no... You don't do anybody any good dead, I guess is the easiest way to say it. I mean, because you can't, you can't push on to fight if you're dead. I mean, so I know most, one thing: if you're singled, if you're singled out, you're dead. If you guys can organize as much as possible, and I guess, I mean, this is the first. Well, I can't say it's the first call I've heard, but maybe you need to call in more, get the get your word out more. This is the first time I've heard. Well, no, I guess it's not I the first time. I was a regular on all the talk yeah. shows for 30 years. Um, once gotta... the Schaefer Cox situation happened, I realized there's no First Amendment right for me anymore. I have been visited by the FBI at my gold mine. Um, I, I just, I just wanted your opinion, and what you're saying is true. Yeah, I, do I want to be a martyr? Otherwise, I might as well quit, and and the dictatorship, fascist dictatorship, just wins. And it's very difficult, you know. I I know all the or talk. Or even worse, the democracy will win. <laughs> well, they already have. But yeah. I know the talk. But the big question a lot of us have is, what walk do we do? And I know not to do violence. I've never done violence, and I don't intend to. But when you can't even organize anymore, as in the Schaefer Cox situation, he was a hell of a leader. And I had no problem with him leading the tech, Second Amendment Task Force. He was doing the work. Um, but I don't see any means of uh, resistance except for civil disobedience and hope you don't get caught. This goes back to what Timothy was talking about. Yeah, I That's think all you can do. What we have to do, and someone just texted me about this too, is that uh, there's a lot of people in your situation and people on the outside, like me, people that are hearing this, they have to be vocal and support you. I mean, I, I need to know more about what you're talking about. I mean, I know about regulations, and I know how the uh, Corps of Engineers works, unfortunately. Yeah, you're in business. I don't even know how you can operate anymore. Uh, it's not fun. 
No, it, it, we've been outlawed. We, we're, we're in a dictatorship as in Colombia where the peasants have been replaced by the multinational Newmont Corporation or Kinross Corporation, and now America, yep. the United States, is sending armed Blackhawks down in one situation in Colombia. This was on National Geographic Channel. They infiltrated uh, by air and gunned down 200 peasant miners out in their, their mining area. You wow. know, the U.S. is at war. The, the, our governments are at total war with us people that want to work for a living. Yeah, So what definitely. do you do? You know, I've, I've heard the talk forever. I'm an old Voglerite. <laughs> Vogler said the same thing clear back in 1977 that you guys are saying. Mm. And I've been to many federal monkey trials. There, There is no means of accomplishing anything through the judicial or executive branch. The legislative branch is, is uh, worthless, too. So, you know, it goes back to what Timothy said. You, you just try to ignore it. But they're going to get you. That when you when you don't resist, you're still going to lose in the end. And that's my one comment. Thank you. Well, the, the uh, this is what I th- this is what I think. There's not enough of us. Mm-mm. That's why. That's the whole reason why it might sound dumb, but that's why we have this show. So we can make more. The reason that we <laughs> no, pay. No, that's, that's what we're it doing. Is, we're, is. We're making, we pay for we're the show more. to come on here for a year and a half now to make more. It's the Isaiah's job, the John uh, Albert J. Knock, is to wake people up. There's more of us out there. we got to wake up because there's not enough of us. We've got to come together, and we've got to support people like Dave. When he does his civil disobedience, we need to be out there and say nope. Or when he gets hauled off into jail, you got to pack the courthouse. They do fear us to a certain extent. The state does fear the people to a certain extent. Otherwise, they wouldn't want to take your arms. They do fear you. Otherwise, they wouldn't have so many laws to throw you in jail. That's the reason they have laws is to make you a criminal. To make it as specific as possible so they can get a conviction. Yep. So that they know they've got you because you violated one little tiny jot or tittle. I I don't think it's worth being a martyr, though. Not right now. Not ever. There's not enough of us. Got to just keep speaking out. I know, like he said, he's been listening for 30 years. This might be a hundred years war. Yeah, I mean, they, they I'm speaking intellectually. Like, Where's Joe? Yeah, Joe Vogler. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was exactly. a martyr. He was a martyr for the cause. I don't think that uh, he intended to be a martyr. Right. the The revolution of the mind might be a hundred year war. I'm not oh. talking armed rebellion. Yeah. I'm talking the fight for our minds. There is a fight well, for our minds. And give it that historic perspective, how many years before the American Revolution were people in the colonies? Think about that. How many what again? How many years? How many years was it between the, the settling of America by Europeans, living under the crown? A couple hundred years. It got real nasty, though. It was actually only about 15 years when things got nasty. Yeah, we have to be patient. Our mental, our time frame has to be way out there. The fast revolutions are the ones that end up like the French Revolution. Yes. When you have the the people rising up without a clear vision of what they want, and without that clear vision of internal liberty. When you're so accustomed to doing what they tell you to do that you need to have somebody tell you what to do, once you throw away the old dictator, all you end up with is blood in the streets. Right. It's like all um, when Obama got elected the second time, it seemed like everywhere I went on the Internet, somebody was saying we need to have a revolution. Everybody. But what what are they advocating for? Get a new guy in charge. That's all they Get want. Get a new guy mm-hmm. in charge. That's all they wanted. And, and that, so the revolutions... The revolutions at at the ballot box. And that was one of the things I kept hearing from Schaefer Cox over and over and over again. We need to get rid of this form of government and form our own, in which he was the one that was going to be in charge. Sure, right. All right, thanks for the call, Dave. Keep up the good fight. 458 Talk is the number. We only have a couple minutes left. See if we've got anybody else here. Good morning. Who's this? Hello, is this me? It might be. It depends on who it is. Okay, uh, Bernard. Bernard, it is you. Congratulations. What's on your mind? Oh, hi. Uh, well, uh, I feel that uh, 
to, to begin to understand anything, you have to start at a, its origination. So uh, you look up, uh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, um, I'm a little nervous here. Oh, you're uh, doing fine. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, I'm, I'm not doing too, uh, see, I'm too darn nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, don't, just just think about it. You're on a phone call with me. You called me okay. and you wanted to tell okay. me what's, what's, what's origination. Let's use me instead okay. because I'd be uh, nervous talking to you. Uh, you have to start with our local government. Uh, and right now, I, I can't think of our local, local government, uh, the, the, the borough. borough. You, have start, you have to start with a borough. You look up the borough and, and use maybe a Black Law Dictionary. And uh, and uh, it was uh, uh, it was uh, abolished uh, about 90 years ago, except for New York, New York. And then when we became a state in uh, in uh, I think it's 59 or 58, mm -hmm. uh, uh, someone uh, took up uh, this form of government, and uh, uh, this monarchy. Uh, 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 this uh, a government is is a government that answers to uh, let me see to, so 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 um, uh, uh, answers to to a monarchy and a monarchy answers to a king and queen and uh, 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 we won our independence in 1776 and when uh, when we bought, when we won our independence, uh, uh, Britain uh, started the East Coast, East Coast, the East Coast Company, and the uh, uh, Hudson Bay Company, and uh, they got this guy by the name of Adams Weishaupt, who uh, wrote, is known to have wrote the most evil thing of, the, the most evil writings of man. And the uh, the British hired him to uh, to devise a plan to take over uh, 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 the the, uh, uh, the wealth and the resources of both the Hudson Bay Company and the East Coast Company. Well, I think your alternative to a borough there is counties, and if we had yeah, counties, we would just have a, more sheriffs totally and different. deputies, and we'd have more cops. Yeah, that's what we should have, I think. That's more? The, but now we're under... Counties are better than borough. I understand they are, but I don't like what comes with Hey, brother, brother, we're out of time. I appreciate your thoughts on that. Thank you very much for uh, bringing that up and giving us something else to think about. Gentlemen, we are out of time today. Quickly, yeah, uh, thanks for the callers. Uh, contact Patri information. PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. PatriotsLament.com at gmail.com is the email. Radio Free Fairbanks on YouTube. All right, and we'll be back again next week, as far as we know, <laughs> 9 a.m. right here on KFA. Up if next. If the Lord wills. That's right.